Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's correct. Uh, <laughs> you should not. Uh, I, it, there. Uh, let's see. Batman, uh, Batman and Catwoman begin this. Now, that's that's what he tweeted. Let me, let me just... Uh, I wanted to see the tweet itself. Uh, open. There. Uh, 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 uh. uh, oh. Yeah, that, that, that's correct. Uh, <laughs> you should not. Uh, I, it's the, DC probably doesn't want you tweeting things like that, Al. When you're the writer, you're one of the writers of Batman. So it's a kid's comic, yeah. so, oh, nice. But Zach and I were talking about this, and it's just like, you know what? I don't want to know what comic book writers, what these uh, new male feminist comic book writers consider to be uh, sex. I, I just don't want to see it. Uh, and Zach was like, was it you that said there's, there's this peculiar thing in comics where men never initiate kiss with women? Uh, and I said, yeah, I have noticed that. Like, in every single comic book in which a kiss happens, uh, this is what you get. A woman leaping on a man, and see the man's eyes are wide open. He's like, what? I wasn't expecting this. Uh, every single time. Like, men, this happens with every character that happens to Batman. Like, Batman's used to getting punched in the face. No, but it's used to being kissed on the face by a beautiful woman. Oh my goodness. I don't think Batman, I don't think his eyes bugs out like this when he's getting a right hook from Killer Croc. But, you know, Catwoman kissing him. Oh, that's just so shocking. <laughs> Alright, so here's, uh, here's, a, here's a sex scene, uh, you know, written in 2016. This is for the uh, Batman New 52 run. Uh, and, you know, as you can see, uh, this is, uh... <laughs> Catwoman's totally, Catwoman's totally dominating Batman. I hope Batman remembered to wear his uh, intro to the universe of light suit. Otherwise, uh, I'm worried about, I'm worried about Batman getting pregnant. So here they are, they're finished. Uh, Batman's like, I'm spent, get me a washcloth. Uh, and, you know, Catwoman, she's nestled. Uh, and between his knees, uh, you know, she's, she's spent to tweaking his nipples. This is disgusting. I really don't want to see what Tom King's version, I don't even know Tom King may have written this, I'm not sure. But I don't want to know, I don't want to see Tom King's version uh, of this situation. <laughs> if it wasn't error, maybe this is why they actually went so Thanks far. very much for watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comments and we'll see. Uh, and, um, oh yeah, please like and subscribe, like this video, uh, and, uh, yeah, this describes to this channel on the card, about me, about actually, 2021, I'm so proud, uh, I'm a great joke, and I'm a great I really don't, that woman, she's nestled firmly, uh, and between his knees, uh, you know, she's, she's spent, you know, tweaking his nipples, this is disgusting. I really don't want to see what Tom King's version. I don't even know Tom King may have written this. I'm not sure, but I don't want to know. I don't want to see Tom King's version uh, of this situation. <laughs> if it wasn't error, maybe this is why they actually. Went so Thanks very much for watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, and um, oh yeah, please like and subscribe. Like this video uh, and uh, yeah, this describes to this channel on the card from 2021. Because you're so confident. Uh, uh, you know, you break over and i the and link above the bow page on the house of the and, and it's not rest that, yeah, you can into your local comic shop this coming Wednesday, you guys love to pick up your new boss and see me at the of Corona. Oh, my God, this dude said if you go to the comic book shop, you're going to get COVID-19. Uh, and if you walk to the counter with a copy of DC's Black Label Batman, uh, Catwoman number one, and a confident grin on your face that says Batman and Catwoman in the, in your hands, you may want to buy two copies, just in case, well, you know, I don't know.
Most most charming and disarming, elegant, eloquent, uh, and yet humble, humble man. Great big Star Wars fan, trusted member of the media. Good to be with you. Uh, I just watched Mandalorian episode 13 for uh, the second time. First time I watched it, I really, really liked it. I had a great time. Uh, it was full of fan service, anchory. As they say, they say that, but it's an unkind thing to say. Fan service, anchory. That's when people, uh, you know, creators do something that fans are hoping that they can do, and then everybody gets negative about it. But I think in this case, uh, you know, people wanted this. People wanted to see a live action of Sokotana, uh, and they got it. Rosario Dawson did a great job. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, she looked just like the animated version of Brought to Life. Uh, it was great. Uh, what else What else did we learn? We learned Baby Yoda's name, uh, Grogu, uh, not to be confused, Guardians of the Galaxy's Baby Group. Uh, and I don't want you to think for one split second that the sudden and unexpected popularity of Baby Group is what maybe led to Baby Yoda uh, in Star Wars. Uh, and now we're going to have infant versions of all kinds of various characters uh, in order to uh, distract from some very poor creative decisions by SJWs working at this moment. And, you know, I don't want you to think that, okay? I want you to stay positive and sunny and happy. Uh, what else happened here? Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn apparently is still alive here. And uh, uh, that, is, that is the reason Ahsoka is here on this desolate world, this forest fire world. And demanding answers. Where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? Yeah, uh, this was a great bit of uh, fan service, and I think uh, it's interesting. Cowboy Dave Filoni is taking this opportunity to take uh, this show that I was really enjoying. I think it's a worthy sequel, worthy successor of the original trilogy. Uh, I like the desolate, believable landscape. Uh, I was liking it. I like how everything just seems like um, everything seems like it follows Return of the Jedi. Uh, very nicely. And I was turning it into a live action version of Rebels and Clone Wars. Your mileage may vary on that. I think the younger Star Wars fans are really, really, really going to be happy about this. Uh, they're waiting for Ezra Bridger, uh, and they're waiting for, you know, more element. Disgusting. I mean, it's going to be awesome, right? But it's just going to be disgusting for Rome. Uh, Rome looks like they're going to absolutely get destroyed. They are just going to get obliterated. And I'll give you some warning signs, some red flags, and why I think that. I've never seen the replay. This is just my first glimpse at it, right? I can just tell that Rome, in about a couple minutes, will be mostly gone from the battlefield. All right, so warning flag number one. Masaisley, by the way, not an attacker. These guys, and they're not even sallying out because they're not leaving the city. They've started outside of the city. They have manpower capability, so they're gonna be able to get that extra surprise on the Romans who have nothing waiting for them. They've got troops pushing tortoises, they've got maybe their general, but you don't want to send your general in oh, first my goodness, against my cap charge. You're going to die. Oh, your general's going to die. And there's, oh, it looks like there's, what, two units of reserve here? And the legionary cohort, which is not a terrible unit, but most of the, like, I, I don't see anything stopping this cap. I don't see Triari, I don't see I don't know. I mean, I just don't see Roman cab to counter enemy cab. So uh, that's your first warning, uh, yeah, warning the sign there, or red that's flag. That this is going to be a disaster for Rome. Number two, we've got Carthage, two units of royal or noble, noble cab uh, that are about to charge out. And then behind them, we've got two units of cataphracts. So that's a total of eight units, right? Eight units about to charge into Rome. And let's not forget that 
Uh, never mind, never mind. Okay. Oh, no, no, there is a gate here. There's a gate here. And we have Parthia. For a second, I thought there wasn't a gate over on this side. And I was like, okay, Rome might have a chance. No, Parthia has some Eastern Cataphracts. Three units that are about to crash in. So that's over 10 units about to go in and slam it against Rome. And they don't have anything for it. And here's my final red flag. And this is really a tip to any new players. When you play Rome 2, and I've said this many times, but I'll say it again. When you play Rome 2, you're attacking. Do not, especially, especially if you're newer to the game, do not deploy far away from your allies. Because they will not get there in time to help you out if you need it. Alright, so sometimes uh, when you're building armies and you're getting ready to attack a settlement, sometimes you'll go to your ally and be like, hey man, how about you bring the cab? Because you're a faction that has really good cab. I'm a faction that has really good infantry, so I'm just going to spam infantry, which is going to be great once you get inside the city. But when you're outside the city, you know, getting ready to push up the siege towers and whatnot, Make sure that you're close to your ally that has that good cap because the defenders, especially if they're good, are going to sally out and they're going to chew you apart. They're going to, yeah, they're going to chew you, chew you up and spit you out like you're nothing. So that's, I have a feeling what we're going to see today. Anyways, just a little tip here. I'm sorry, a lot of people want to see Rome do well. I don't think that's going to be today. I think Rome's going to die here in about five minutes, okay? So let's go ahead and look at the factions here attacking and see how this battle plays out. So of course we have Rome, uh, his closest ally, which is still very far away, and he does not have cab. He does not have, at least I don't see any here. He has one unit, one unit of cab. Not going to make it there in time. Uh, but we have the Armenians. So they're pushing up some hillmen. They've got some uh, nice axemen and stuff. They're bringing some artillery. Uh, next to them, we've got the uh, Seleucids, a very solid attacking faction. And then next to them, we have uh, Kush. Kush is on the battlefield. So they have Rome and Kush on the battlefield. And that's a very powerful combo. But guess what? That combo is not going to last because uh, Rome's going to be gone here soon. So it's just going to be Kush. Uh, so defending, we have Nabatea. Looks like they're mostly focusing up against Push. Then we have Carthage against the Seleucids. And then we have um, Sicily against Rome. And then finally Parthia facing against the Armenians. So guys, are you ready for this sally out? By the way, I'm getting some weird stutter in the game. I don't know if it's the map. Maybe if I just press play, I'll go away. Sometimes that happens. But let's see how this plays out. Let's see how this plays out. So right away, Say sleep, pushing up this cab. Oh, God. If you're a Roman soldier right now, you're like, what is that? Oh, that's the enemy with four units of Lancer Cab. Maybe when you first see this, too, you're thinking, hey, you know what? We can handle this. It's just four units. Here we go. We got Cab pushing in. Nice little push right into the general. Boom. The general didn't even move, meaning the Roman player has no idea that this is happening. And now he's about to hit the artillery. And now he's now he realizes he's getting attacked. Now he realizes that things are not looking good for him. And uh, yeah, he's already lost his general. So kind of. I think the general the general's still alive, but he lost a lot of bodyguards there. And the infantry is closing in, which is good. You know, he's trying to save his archers. He can kind of save this a little bit, but, oh no, there are more reinforcements. Noble Cab from Carthage pushing in. They're going to charge the rear of the, the flank of these uh, swordsmen. And, oh my god, look at the destruction there. Here comes another unit, and then here comes Parthia, baby. That's what I'm talking about, guys. I mean, you can't risk being by yourself. Especially against a faction like Parthia. Because you know Parthia is a cab focused faction. You know it. So, seeing them charge in like this, eh, it's, it's rough. It is rough. There goes another charge. Uh, so, at this point, it looks like Rome trying to keep, you know, check on his archers. Looks like he's got a couple archer units still alive. The chariots are going straight for the archers. 
going straight for the skirmishers, slicing them down. The general's sitting back thinking, like, oh my god, the horror. I'll just stand here, though. Uh, he should be running his general away. I, I guess he's kind of trapped wherever he goes. He's, there's really no escape from this. There's cab everywhere, ready to rumble. Uh, nice little cab charge from the, uh, the Catafrax. He mistakenly sitting back. He's like, all right, boys, get a breather. Let's let Parthia go in there and wreck them. Are the Armenians, Armenians, put, okay, they are pushing up with the siege tower, so that's not a terrible idea. Uh, sometimes you'll see uh, players just kind of quickly push in while they know that the defenders are focusing with the cab. But uh, literally all of the players are microing over here. We have four different cab units from, you know, or four factions with cab messing around here. We got Carthage, Navatia, Sicily, and Parthia. So those are all the defenders out here with Cav microing. So you might be able to get them by surprise with aggressive push, which it looks like it's working. Look at this. They're taking this corner. The walls are crumbling. This is not terrible. This is actually working out for them. Um, I don't know why my game is being so stuttery right now. I don't know if it's the map or what. Now there are eight armies, so uh, four players in each team. That might be the reason, but still, it's very frustrating. Anyways, uh, big push here by the Seleucids. And uh, yeah, that's that's actually not a terrible idea. Holy shit! They might be thinking, you know what? We can't help our ally over there. We're not going to save them. So we might as well just push and start you know, hopefully getting the enemy, the defenders, by surprise by attacking so aggressively. And uh, I think that's kind of what they're going for. Holy shit! <laughs> uh, <laughs> they were just down there and they just fucking bombed them all. I was kind of hoping the Armenians, Ar Armenians would send over some caps and blood cap, but now they're keeping them in reserve back over this way. Holy shit, I killed a bunch of fucking pigs. The Romans are in disarray. They are just not... They are dead. They've got a lot of forces just getting chewed up. Um, they've got a lot of units left, but they're all very depleted. Uh, over here at Carthage, again, they're kind of, it's like they're taking breaks, you know, they're taking breaks, going in at different times, letting the cab rest up a little bit. It's a disaster, just a complete disaster for Rome. As Rome at this point has probably lost like 60% of his army, maybe even more, 65, 70%. Parthia has fallen back. He's saving his calf. And uh, the Armenians have taken this corner, which they can now use to start pushing against the Parthians, which I think they're actually going to do a pretty good job against. So pretty good from the Armenians. So over here, Carthage is uh, holding against the Seleucids. As Seleucids uh, continue to pour in some troops against the Libyan infantry. So they've broken down a couple walls here. And uh, over here as well. Some Hillman going in first. I assume he's using Hillman first to try to absorb some ammo. <laughs> Thorax swordsman up on the wall is getting peppered down by the Holy archers. Shit. Got some Every time I pronounce, I think I pronounce Cretan or something, uh, I get told it's Cretan. Uh, maybe I'm saying that wrong. Maybe I'm forgetting it incorrectly. But anyways, it doesn't matter. He's got mercenary archers. And I appreciate it. Seriously, though, I, I appreciate it when you guys correct me when I pronounce things incorrectly. Just give me time. Give me time, and I will eventually get it down. I promise you. Um, I'm just a slow learner. Uh, but yeah, we, uh, when it comes to pronouncing things, I mean, really, I'm a slow learner. It's fine. It's fine. Anyways, living infantry, trying to hold off these swordsmen from Kush. Uh, so Kush is kind of throwing in some troops, trying to help uh, the Seleucids. The Seleucids are breaking, but they're just filming, so it's not that big of a deal. But they need to send up more troops to reinforce them. 
Uh, back over this way, we've got uh, Parthia kind of re-consolidating his forces, getting ready to hold. Now, I, a part of me thinks that Parthia potentially just gave up this corner. Now that I'm looking at it, it's just, there's only one path here. And he's doing a good job of holding with these hoplites. It's tough. This is, see, I, you can't attack this wall because it's just slums over here. And I'm trying to think, how can you get behind Parthia? This is actually really good positioning by Parthia here. Parthia decides to send out, he's sending out his cab. And he's already got a cab unit. No, this is a unit. <laughs> what the heck? How did this building get over here? No idea, but they're charging over here with these archers, trying to get them by surprise. But the cab's charging in, and the Armenians are just pouring in their entire army, most of their army, into this, this wall, trying to get the safety of the wall. Got to get these archers in here so the cab doesn't hit them. Uh, back over this way, things are pretty calm. Rome, of course, not really doing anything. He's getting his uh, troops back on the equipment. Even though he has a small army, you know, he can still do some damage. It's never over. Even if you just have one unit, you know, use that one unit the best you can. That's less you have the micro. It can be very effective with just controlling a few units. I've seen it before many times. Over here, we got a fierce wall battle between Nabatea and Kush. This Kush continues to push us to experiment against the Nabatea and Axe Warriors, which, of course, the Axe Warriors are going to easily defeat the Spearmen. So I'm sure that Kush is just this, you know, beginning, beginning invasion. Back over this way, they've broken down the walls. Uh, Carthage is ready to hold. Five Six Carthage. targets destroyed. I get why they're holding over here, because they don't want them to be able to go up these stairs and go down this way and attack behind the uh, other Carthaginian units. Because what I was thinking is like, oh, they could just hold this right here, but then you leave this open, which they could run down the walls, and yeah, it would be a disaster. Uh, but it looks like the uh, Seleucids are slowly yeah, taking this region here. Maybe, maybe the Carthaginians are just kind of bending their defense a little bit, letting them have some ground, which is not always a terrible idea. Now the Libyan infantry stand here alone defending this point. I wonder if they're going to send up more reinforcements. Carthage still has a lot of troops in the center. Yeah, they, they are definitely holding back a lot of reserves. Vesaisley has a ton of troops and definitely, definitely will not need all of them against Rome. So I wonder if Vesaisley is going to push over their troops over to help uh, the Carthaginians against against Syracuse. Over here, the Kush is really hanging back. I hate to see that. I really do, because when you attack, you don't really want to attack in waves. That's kind of what it looks like he's doing. Uh, we'll see how that progresses. Uh, definitely have uh, the Seleucids doing well. The Armenian, Armenians are doing Decent as well, but they're having a tough time. I mean, this is you know, I, I think they could have just taken it slow. It looks like there's a lot of death over here. Did we see a bit. Of, yeah, I think we're seeing some cab charges, but uh, nothing too. I, again, I'm sorry if I miss certain things. It's, there's a, always a million things going on during a battle. I know some people will complain, like you always miss the good parts. You like you don't focus. Stop talking about your life and just focus, I'm sorry, right, I'm sorry, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's talking about your life, that's a small minority, uh, but yeah, they're charging, and they're going to get these, uh, these skirmishers, why is talking about like, your life, like, 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 <laughs> it is just running like poo I don't know why, and I, it hasn't been times. running like this <laughs> since, I mean, I, I think it's the this replay or the map, I'm not really sure. This but, uh, the Seleucids are blah, blah, blah. pushing hard against Carthage. They got one unit of Libyan infantry holding this tree, and another unit holding this tree. It looks like Carthage is actually no, making some, some headway here. I think they're, they're, they're getting there. And Bush is pushing up some slave infantry against these axe warriors. We have the noble cab running around looking for an opportunity to get some hammer and anvil, some good charges or something. I mean, this unit's about to break. They could charge the cab through this gap and start harassing push. 
definitely a possibility. Rome is still hanging back, which is actually not a terrible idea, because by hanging back, he, he's kind of... It's almost like he's staying alive, right? Because if he pushed in and basically, you um, know, take some of really quickly, then all percent. these troops would just be reinforcements for other parts of the battle. So him just staying there and being alive keeps Masasely glued to this wall, and uh, you know, he keeps it concentrated on that. So yeah, it's not, it's not a terrible move by Rome. Uh, his allies definitely need him though. Pretty soon. And ooh. Some really good flank and fire. Look at this. Great use of the walls here. Yeah, I definitely think the Armenians, Armenians should have used their siege towers, maybe put one here and start attacking the gate. Because if they could conquer the gate, that would have been another another entry point there. Look at this. Parthia pushing out their cat. These royal cataphracts already have 78 kills. Go. They're, they're moving up, they're looking for an opportunity. Looks like they're going to go for the artillery. I mean, does this artillery still have ammo? I, I assume so. Here we, here we go, here comes the charge. Boom. Disgusting looking charge, mostly because of the lag, but a really good charge on these eastern uh, large onager crew here. And that's going to take out the artillery. The Armenians have... Armenians... Uh, want to say Armenians, Armenians. Anyways, they find themselves in a trap. They are surrounded in this little, little, little corner that initially was going well when they were attacking it, but they just kind of commit everyone here, and it's just a death trap. It's a death alley. Parthia has plenty of reinforcements. It's not looking good for the attackers at this stage of the battle. Over here, it looks like the Carthaginians... Did I say Carthaginians are the Parthians have read? Anyways, the Carthaginians are pushing uh, up units. I always screw up names. I swear I'll like switch around names. You guys are, if you've been watching me for a while, you know, you know I switch up uh, names all the time, but I don't mean it obviously. But yeah, Carthaginians are pushing up against the Seleucids, pushing them out. Basically, all the progress they have gained from fighting and taking these walls is pretty much gone now as Carth Carthaginians are pushing all of their Libyan infantry through these, uh, these royal peltas, which is going to be a tough fight. The royal peltas are very good. Uh, the Seleucids are starting to run out of reinforcements. Carthage is finally pushing up troops. I mean, this is salt here. It looks really messy. Really messy. He charged up in waves. Looks like he's still going up in waves. Just... You don't want to attack in waves. You know, attack is one solid force. Because if you attack in waves, you get focused down piece by piece. Oh, look at this! They push it. They, they push it. They push it. Here's how one household innovation does it all. The Four Seasons 4 and 1 warms you up in fall, humidifies winter dryness, purifies the air, and cools you down in summer. The Four Seasons 4 and 1, just $179.97. They, they push through, and uh, now they're ready to take on some hillmen, and uh, they're taking on hillmen over here. The hillmen should die in this, yeah, they're losing decisive pick. Here comes the general once again, look at this, just seeking blood. They are hungry for some blood, and oh my god, look at this. Okay, we can still I don't think it's working out for them. Royal Cataphracts, they're getting focused down by uh, some skirmishing projectiles, whatever it may be. They're down to 49 troops, and a nice little stand there for the Hillman. Good little defense there by the Archimedes. All right, here comes Rome. Rome is pushing up. Finally, they're going to take the walls, or try to take the walls. And Sicily is already pushing up the desert. Uh, Vigilates, vigilates. I don't know. <laughs>